After that, we have uh, Tiffany, Rivera. Tiffany Rivera, who will speak about zircons and uh, on her lunch talk, and then for the public talk about Yellowstone. Everybody knows about the super eruptions, but there's like 50, 70. 50 to 70, 70 of minor eruptions that you could have watched and taken photos of and not been killed. So it's a really good science there. Our speaker today, Mike Moore, is, uh, spent part of his childhood in Nebraska, graduated from high school there, went to the University of Nebraska, Omaha. He's been here in Jackson working at Teton Mountaineering for 17 plus years. His uh, rock collecting uh, activities, obsession, however you want to characterize it, has been ongoing since childhood. He's collected rocks all over the West, including Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, what are they now? Okay, uh, Nebraska as well. And uh, he's brought an incredible assortment of guides, tools, and actual rocks that, that you can find. And there's some pretty spectacular things up here, which uh, we'll, we'll leave them up for a few minutes after lunch so you can come up and have a look at them and ask Mike a question that he doesn't perhaps cover in the talk. So please join me in welcoming Mike Moore. This is the good place to stand. Yeah, thank you. Just down right. in front of the screen. Okay, yep. Perfect. All right, so I put together a little thing about rock comedy in Wyoming. Um, part of what I love with this photo is that road is on the map. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there are others like that. And I've learned since about high clearance and not high clearance. Uh, going through all the photos for this, I really missed my old Tahoe. <laughs> uh, I got a nice gas efficient thing now, and, and I missed the Tahoe. <laughs> um, all right. Well, thank you, everybody. And first of all, it's it's an honor to have an, to have been asked to come and speak to you guys because you're you know I know there are top level geologists here and. Uh, that likes to go out and kick rocks and have a good time and find things and just learn about what I'm finding. Uh, a big thanks to Chuck Dahl, Wally Allard, my old time Professor Plowman from way back in the day, Steve Whiteman, and the Wyoming Geolo Geological Survey. All those guys help me a lot when I do my research before I head out and start picking rocks up. Uh, resources. There are so many resources out there for us. And that, yes. Mike, can you speak up? I can hardly hear you. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes, I can. Thank you. <laughs> um, so there are so many resources out there available for us. Um, I spend more time by far, probably triple, looking stuff up trying to figure out where do I want to go, what do I want to look for, than I do actually when I go out looking for things. Um, and here's some different resources we can use. We're going to back up. We can have a screenshot for this one. One, the important one is the Bureau of Land Management has a uh, website for the LR2000. <coughs> Sounds boring, it is boring. <laughs> but it, you put in your section township range of what you want to find out about and it will tell you if there is a mining claim in that section township and range. So you can know ahead of time that I'm not allowed to go there. But more than that, you can find out, well, somebody's abandoned that, but somebody thought enough of that to pay the $150 fee to claim it. Maybe they've since, you know, stopped since then, but somebody found something interesting enough 
to not just put posts in the ground, but to pay the money. Because I've put posts in the ground twice. Uh, never paid the money, because on further recollection, it's like, you know, that's not worth it. You know, I don't need to claim that. I've gotten from that area where I want. Um, the next, we'll go through some of these, but um, the Wyoming Geological Survey um, has a bunch of free downloads. Now, the book that got me real is Bulletin 71. And in that bulletin, uh, Wally Aldous gave that to me because he knew I was in the So then he gave me that book. It was like, oh, if I want to find Barrow, here's my box. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, county by county. To me, it's a little weird because it's, I'm used to most books that are like, oh, if you go to this area, you can find this, that, and the other thing. This book kind of does it different. It says, you want to find the thing, well, you can find it in this county, that county. It'll give you a section township range, so knowing how to read your maps for section township range is very important. Um, and it will, um, you know, it might mention other things, but then in the next chapter you read about, you know, different mineral, tourmaline, and it'll list that same section again. Um, so it's quite a bit of fun and different, a different type of read. The fun thing with the download, oops, no. the fun thing with the download of that is they had some graduate students scan it. No, probably an undergrad <laughs> scan it. Um, Everything's sideways. <laughs> Some are upside down. <laughs> the order is not in order. <coughs> now, you've got your page numbers, and in your PDF, you can say, okay, twist my orientation. You know, so there's a little work to do, but, but it's there. But it's not just Bulletin 50, which is my favorite. <laughs> and the reason it has superseded Bulletin 71, and we'll get to a site a little bit further on, in Bulletin 71, it gives you the wrong location. It gives you a location that's state property that you can't collect from. It's actually BLM land that you can collect from, though it was under claim the last three years. Uh, the claim has expired as of January 1st of this year, according to the website. How often is the website? You know, it might still be under claim and somebody just you know, the website's not up to date. So before you were to go to that zone, you might need to collect anything. You have to be aware of the posts on the ground and maybe call the county clerk on that. Um, your phone. So many fun things on your phone. Now, I'm cheating a little bit with my favorite app, Geology Space WY. <coughs> you can't get it anymore. It was only available on I Apple on iTunes. I don't know if they're fully out of business or not. They were for a while. It came back to the iTunes store, and now it's gone again. But I would keep an eye open for it. They do a bunch, most of the western states, and they're going to be geology space UT for Utah. Geograph space CO for Colorado. And they, they just have some more data that are like how many people live here, how do they vote, what's the, you know, there's some more of that kind of data in there. But there's a ton of data in it, and we'll talk about some fun things about it as well, because it's not always right. Uh, Gaia GPS. If there's one map app to get, that's it. And I've, I've bought some that are more expensive than that. And, um, they're not as good. You can pick your layers. I don't, I'm only showing here two different layer types. This is a screenshot of basically the same area, which is by um, Granite Hot Springs. And that's a track I took. We'll talk about that track in just the next slide, actually. Um, this layer is showing public lands. Is it Forest Service? Is it BLM? Is it private? Is it state? Well, we know that that's all Forest Service land. 
Uh, but if you were, you know, you can zoom in and be standing at some place collecting because there's a lot of areas that are right here, you can collect. Right here, now you're on somebody's private property. You know, and you've got to respect those boundaries. You're allowed to cross any of the private property. You're allowed to go ask the landowner and say, hey, can I collect on your land? We'll have another important story about that as well. Another one so far that's free that I really like, and the only problem with it. The guy on you download stuff onto your phone, then you go into airplane mode and you always have those files. The files are physically on your phone. So all your layers that you downloaded, you've got. Um, you don't need cell phone coverage, which is important in our state. Um, the, but you've got to remember to download the file before you go. I've, I've been in a few places where it's like, oh yeah, I've got this file. No, I don't. All right, does the road go or not? And then you go, and then you turn around and come back, and all that fun stuff. Bankos is free, last time I looked. It's a very good app. Uh, it's another mapping app, but you need connectivity for it. Like when you click on to, all right, I want to know about this spot, it will give you, okay, in this spot you have Madison Formation, blah, 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 blah. Here is the geologic column, blah, 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 blah. So you know, okay, here's, here's some of the things you can be looking at. To me, it's not Eureka. It's usually. <coughs> now, this is um, the maps we have here. So we are heading towards the Eureka site. And just love all those dog tooth spar crystals in there, uh, calcite crystals, all these nodules. The answer is that looks odd. If it looks odd, you're onto something, <laughs> generally. So, like in one day, gonna go look for morel mushrooms up by uh, Granite Hot Springs. Just cross the hot springs, look up towards uh, the open book and up in that area like you do all the time. What's this sliver of a couloir with a line in the middle of it? Um, so I'm talking about this couloir. It had snow in it at the time. And I saw a dark line. This is an aerial view. That aerial view is from Mancos. So that's a screenshot. So here's this super secret arch. It's beautiful. And you could tell from, you know, that far away that, hey, there's a little arch up there, I think. You know, wanted, I asked people about it. I wanted to get up there. Nobody ever seemed to know about it. Finally got up there and, uh, you know, found all those beautiful geode crystals. Um, it was a whole bunch of fun. It's a nasty bushwhack. Uh, this was my third try to try to get up there. Like, which way do you go? The phone, GPS, helped a lot. Google Earth ahead of time helped a lot. It's like, oh, OK, I was going up the wrong gully. And the gully would have gotten there eventually, but I want to go up this ridge instead. And uh, Google Earth helped me find what ridge I wanted to take. And it's not so secret. Turns out, when I'm trying to find out the name, it's in, someone says, oh, let's look in Turiano's ski book. Yep, it's in Tom Turiano's ski book. <laughs> He's ski book. Um, but that shows you, so these are all Gaia screenshots. Zoomed out, zoomed in. That's my track out. That spot with the three, that's where the arch is. And there's an aerial view from Gaia that you can, again, zoom in or out of. So research and look around the corner. Um, that looks like a boring chunk of granite over at South Pass. So at South Pass, when you're, you've left Farson, you're on your way to Atlantic City, and you cross uh, Sweetwater, you know, you're all over the bridge in that little welcome center bathroom. And now you're heading up and you see the snow pickets. And then there's a, uh, a little dirt road that heads off to your left. That's between a couple creeks. And that's where I found this tourmaline barrel. And, barrel. and um, 
you can see, so here's the main road. Here's the dirt road. And just off the dirt road, there we are. Um, there has been, isn't that a little, you know, little green area in there? A bunch of ancient ash. It's probably over 50 years old, so it's a historical artifact. But <coughs> tin cans and bed springs and spoons and all those good things. And so people have been there this morning. Uh, and that's a zoomed out version of it. You know, so the main highway is right there. These roads are closed, so you have to park there and just go for a little walk. And bunches of, that's eh, not so good looking in the photo, but a bunch of tourmaline. My fingers are basically on the tourmaline in the middle of the courts. And here we are back to our boring looking hunk of granite. You look under the, that, that seam, you go underneath, and there is a great big tourmaline crystal just waiting to be plucked out. I got a couple from right there. And there it is popping out. Now the one I have on the table that's big and fat is from that same little pocket. And uh, I don't know how many people have walked by those terminals. They were not hard to get out at all. And big honkers. And, uh, yeah, it was quite a bit of fun. And there's other loop, cool tourmaline crystals on the ground and stuff that people walk by and around rode out all the time. But, you know, the biggest ones have been sitting there. You just look under the corner. Could you so, pick up the, the tourmaline over there? Oh, sure. Because so it's a beautiful it's, specimen. Oh my god. Whoa. Uh, it's that tourmaline crystal. Wow. <laughs> just curious, what did it take? either that one or the one in the picture to get it out of the rock. Did you just tap on it a little bit? Or? I had to remove, tap on it a little bit. I had to remove some stuff surrounding it and then it came real loose and it was just like, you know, it was not wedged in there hard. It was real, yeah, yeah we can we pass it around. Can we handle it? Yeah. Just don't throw it at anybody. <laughs> that, that's all. Um, so, again, what looks odd? That little seam right under there looks a little odd. Let's go look at it. Wow. Okay, well this is kind of a lie, because this is a second seam, but I have two different photos, so there we are. Two different spots, but the same stuff. It's not rose quartz. It's not morganite, but it has this beautiful rose quartz morganite look and feel to it. Uh, as you can see by the owie on my finger, uh, gloves are a good idea, bandages and tape, good idea, this stuff will slice you up. All of, all of these places, the spodamine place is the worst. I opened up a finger there. Whoops. Oh, 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 oh. Here we go. This is actually Elbite Feldspar. And you can tell it has this beautiful crystal structure, and that's what I forgot to bring, some of the old white feldspar. Um, which is actually the same thing as a rhinestone. Uh, but rhinestones are clear. This stuff has a pink. I think the pink is from the same, oh, don't quote me now. I believe it's from the same manganese that makes rose quartz rosy quartz is clear. You need something to throw in to give it a color. Um, and then on um, this, and I need to send a piece of this off to a friend. Maybe he will analyze it for me and get what that chemical is that's in there. Um, Probably chrome. Chromium. You think chromium? Yep. Okay. Mike, we'll find out. Okay, so now i got to send stuff off to uh, my friend in Italy. Okay, so this all looks so flat. And this is South Pass again, we're still. And the hard thing there, this is where I'm going to strike it rich, <laughs> South Pass. Um, to me, it's all about, I want to find the beautiful gemstones. You know, I want to find stuff that's worth thousands of dollars per carat, not agates that are... 10 bucks a pound. You know. 
But that's my quest. Other people love the petrified wood, the agates. You know, everybody gets to have their own favorite. Um, there is a report in Bulletin 71 that once upon a time somebody found a sky blue tourmaline here. Hazel says it's shoral, which is the black tourmaline that we're passing around. You do not find gem grade tourmaline unless you find the iron shoral pouring tourmaline. You know, the black stuff. You won't find the good stuff without the black stuff. It just doesn't happen. Now, if you find the black stuff, you may or may not find the good stuff. But you won't, you know, so his little comment uh, doesn't hold up. And I look back for some stuff, and I look back for some stuff. So I had to come here and try to find it. And then it's flat. How do you dig into anything? What do you look for? Well, one of the secrets from the topaz thing, you look for roots. So if there's a plant there, there's enough cracks for the roots of the plant to get into. That's where it opens up. So then you go look around that area. What can I get into? So then we go. There you go. Just going to park in there. There we go. So it's flat, it's boring, I'm having a hard time. I take my trusty sledgehammer, and I'm walking around, and I see a little lumpty dump. And I, I go golfing with the sledgehammer. <laughs> and it was one golf, one swing. <coughs> and the question is, do you see the ball? So I go whack, I hit the big rock, and it pulls over. And this photo, it's kind of hard to see. But right there, which is right there, is the barrel crystal. And that is on right here. And what you're seeing poking out there is that little part. And then the rest of it is all here. There it went. Well, when I was cleaning this up and getting this out, um, yeah, it didn't go as cleanly, nicely as I wanted. But there's the longer section of the barrel. Wow. Uh, it's it's super glued together. If you break it, I can super glue it together again. <laughs> we're, we're okay. Yep. Yeah, so there's there's the zoom in. And this is a thing that again that I pick a fight with Hazel with. He talks about, oh, somebody found a barrel crystal at South Pass and it was so big and so long and parts of it were jemmy. <laughs> um, look around on that thing as it's going around and you'll see, yeah, there are one millimeter by one millimeter parts in there that are jemmy and it's kind of nice. And I would call that jemmy if it was half of that clear stuff, but not half a millimeter at a time. Clear stuff. You know, to me, that doesn't count. And then this is just fun. Um, I don't know who's read Lord of the Rings, but uh, uh, when you're here and it's low and late in the day, and you got the long shadows. Uh, this reminds me of the section where, with of the Barrow Downs, and monsters, and all that kind of raids, and all that good stuff. So that, those are just these, yeah. um, it's not a slate at that point. It's, well, it's the metagree wacky stuff. It's billions of years old, and I can't remember. It's in one of the books, talks about how it is. And it's been resistant. The stuff around it eroded away. And that's just how it's sitting, like at those tombstones. And it's just. And I can't remember exactly from what the, <coughs> the book, you know, the bulletin had dated it when you go through and, and read up on some of this stuff. But somewhere around three billion years old, and it's a metamorphic rock, so it had to be something before it got, you know, I mean, just, to me, that's astounding that it's right there. And again, take out your trash. There's some of our antique 
cans now. At the same place here, so this is all in the same little neck of the woods, there at South Pass, there is an old <coughs> prospect. There's that older report of a sky blue tourmaline. There is a type of tourmaline no, that came from Pariba, I know I'm mispronouncing that, but that's how I pronounce it, in Brazil, a tourmaline mine there, that is copper-based, a copper, copper is the coloring mineral in this tourmaline. And they are super expensive, you know, thousands of dollars per carat if you can get one. Uh, the ones that are not from Brazil, that come from Nigeria or Madagascar, still have the copper in it, still have these beautiful sky blue tourmalines, and they're still worth, you know, a percentage less than the thousands to tens of thousand dollars per carat. But I have copper, I have a report of a blue tourmaline. Some I know one of these days I'm going to find the pocket. <laughs> and maybe I never do, but I have fun in the meantime. But if anyone has a ground penetrating radar, they have a little in me. <laughs> we can talk. Um, so here's a fun thing using that app that you can't get anymore. Uh, but the, the location of it, and I can't remember the person's name, but it's, it's a family name. They have a bunch of claims out in this neck of the woods. This is southeast of Lander. This is on your way. Sweetwater is right over here. Some, that's the Sweetwater. Um, that's the Sweetwater. And um, you're on your way to Disney <coughs> City, and then you, that's uh, Beaver Rim, or Cedar Rim. And um, I'm going out there because there's supposed to be some corundum there, some rubies. We'll call them rubies, but it's a corundum, and it's a, you know. But I want to go look and find a couple. It'll be fun. So I go out there, and the one problem with that app, it will take you right to a, a mineral resource. I mean, you can GPS it, and you can stand right on the mineral resource. The problem is the, the conversion that somebody used. Was it from Section Township range? Was it because of map 21 versus 20 or whatever those numbers are? Uh, whatever the reason is, when you stand right where you're supposed to be, you will be a thousand feet, give or take, off from where you want to be. But it's kind of fun because so you go to your spot and then you start going out from there. But a bunch of times I've found something cool in the spot I'm not supposed to, uh, you know. You know, it's, here's the spot that's not the spot, but look at this other cool stuff. So, nasty road. But I'm walking around and I go, huh, that's odd looking. So this is where my uh, rubies are supposed to be, or my sapphires. What are those long stick things? I didn't know, so I picked a bunch up. And went back later um, and picked more up. So those are baculite fossils. And this one here, so that's your baculite. That is ammonite. And there's various kinds of ammonites. I never knew that. And I'm not into fossils. But after I got here, I'm a little bit into fossils because I found some fun things. What's, what's right on the left side there, halfway up? I, that looks like another chunk of ammonite. I, it's either, um, I can't yeah, remember yeah. on this one, it's either a shell, baculite, or ammonite. But there were a couple things all right there. Yeah, and then they're <coughs> glittering. So we're looking. That little gray hill, hillock between the two, that mound is covered. And each freeze thaw cycle, each spring, more come out. I have found overall probably 700 baculites there mm -hmm. from small to big. And I give them out to kids. It's fine. And that's the first thing I found there. That's ammonite. And there's septarians there, too. Can you pass around a couple of those? What's sure. a septarian? Uh, it's a septarian. There's a weird little nodule thing that um, I have a good chunk here. 
going to well, here's some bacculites. Oh, and the ammonite hat that you can start passing around. Oh yeah. Um, it's a mud ball that calcite and barite crystals started forming in. And they, as they grew and expanded, <coughs> they were pushing out the surrounding mud. So it has, it's not named after seven. You'll read on the internet, so you'll find different things. That septa, septarian, is for seven, because it looks like it has seven chunks. Nope, septa is for separate, separation, like your septum. Both Latin words, but there we go. Um, and when you get a black light on those babies, beautiful orange glow. And uh, it's, it's really good. And then kicking around. Yeah, I thought it was purple at first. I, I, I was, you know, because you're out in the bright lights out in the high desert. And, uh, but that's a, a agate. It's a sweet water agate. Under black light, that will uh, glow green because of the uranium salts that are inside of it. It's pretty cool. And then you got to keep your eyes open. Look at the beautiful cactus or succulent. And here's that same area of that beaver moon divide. Uh, that's our Kosick formations, a lot of it. Um, lots of different layers there. But it's an old mountain that's been blown to smithereens, and then the smithereens got cemented again together again, but loosely. It's so weird looking. And horned lizards are fun to pet. Well, I like saying great horny toads and seeing who gets all excited and he has to correct you. But I wouldn't be Yosemite Sam. And when you forget that your lights are on, uh, no, you needs a jump, and none of your friends are they're working that day. Well, the only connectivity you can get is through Facebook. Oh. I could get Facebook, I could not send a text, I could not call anybody. And my one friend got back to me on a met. It's so bizarre. But what's bizarre, even more bizarre, is when you're texting back and forth. I could have texted eventually, but messaging Fremont County Sheriff's Facebook page, um, hey, if anybody could give me a jump, that'd be great. <laughs> um, a little bit when they couldn't talk to me, but they could knew I had this kind of connectivity. They're like, oh, you have Verizon, don't you? Uh, and, yes, sir. <laughs> uh, and it took a while. Search and Rescue could have found me. The sheriff doesn't know how to read maps, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Whatever they were texting him, because I sent him USGS, lat long, section town <coughs> range with quarter section, um, <laughs> pictures of me pointing at the map. <laughs> it took him a little while to find me, but that's because it's there's the road. <coughs> you, you saw the pictures of the roads. Next, my favorite place, the smiley face from outer space gem mine. I put posts here. Um, can you see the smiley face? Oh. oh. <laughs> no matter which aerial photo you look at, no matter which year of Google Earth you look at, the smiley face is there. I've stood in the middle of the smiley face and could not tell that there was a smile, you know. <laughs> same, I mean, there's bushes all over, and these are the same bushes. But uh, what do you find at the smiley face from outer space, Gemini? <laughs> well, it's a butcher knife draw, which oh. <clears throat> when you read the book and you want to know about diamonds, it talks about butcher knife draw. I'm going to find diamonds. Well, I knew that I might find a diamond. I'm not excited about the diamond. I'm excited about the ant hills. Now, this is one that Wally Albrecht turned me on to, along with taking your ice axe with you. You look at the ant hills. They do the sorting and classifying for you. So you look at the ant hills and you find chrome pyrope <coughs> garnets. And they're beautiful little things. Those are worth money. 
Yeah, you can see the crystal in shape there. And that, when you polish that, and you say, hey, Jeter, what do you think of my work? Because I cut gemstones, too. And Jeter just looks at it from the side and goes, oh, is that a ruby? Did you do a ruby? No, it's a chrome pyrocarnet. Oh, OK, that makes sense. But it's got the ruby red color because of the chrome. And you know, unless you're inspecting it or looking at it, you don't know if, what you've got. I mean, here, there's reasons to know it's not corundum, but it's a beautiful rock. Be worth money. Put the posts in. Do some digging. Find out that, boy, the biggest thing I got was a little over three millimeters, so I could cut a three millimeter stone. It's going to take me all day. It's hard to do the small ones, and I pop off the dot more. That's not worth any money. You know, so I never filed a claim. Uh, but they're beautiful stuff, and if you could find bigger ones, which there are, cause a little farther south from here at Cedar Mountain, um, that might be worthwhile if you found enough good-sized <coughs> garnets. That, that would be worth money. And then when you eventually, if you spent enough years and went through enough dirt, found your diamond, your diamond would be a fun bonus. And that's the way I looked at it. And there's another picture, kind of a zoom in. And so the chrome diopside, that's the green stuff, and the chrome pyro garnets, those indicate a kimberlite pipe. Those come together only in kimberlite pipes, so you know, okay, I've got to have one somewhere. And with the chrome diopside, it has perfect cleavage in a couple directions. And now I can't remember exactly the length. Somebody did a study. How far can a chrome diopside travel before it is smithereen, before it is dust? Because it has that perfect cleavage. It's going to break. Um, somewhere between a half mile and a mile. And I can't remember, was it 0.8 miles? Was it a mile? Was it a half mile? I, I don't recall. But you know that if you're finding some, you're somewhere near a kimberlite pipe. And in the butcher knife draw, no one has found the kimberlite pipe that's there. My guess from looking at the way the layers are there, um, it's thrust fault zone, everything's uplifted and tilted, and I think you have several parts of a kimberlite pipe that have been displaced and that have weathered over time, and that's why you find more in this little spot, and less over here, and more on the next side. In that zone, I found a turtle bone. Didn't know exactly what I was picking up when I was picking it up, because again, I don't know fossils, you know, and I had asked them <coughs> for some friends for help. Um, and I had a Geiger counter once upon a time, so I got to play with stuff, and bones can often be radioactive. What's interesting is the bone is not, but that bone was broken and re-cemented together. Whatever is re-cementing it together has a good chunk of uranium in it, and it's, we can play with it later. It's active. It's, it's active. And there's a... Now, it's not legal to take vertebrate fossils from public lands, like that turtle. <coughs> you must have the landowner's permission to collect that. Um, I was a very, very bad man, and I picked some of these things up that I weren't sure what they were. I knew it was a fossil. I mean, I, I knew it had to be bone. But I picked some up and went away with it, and then got home and felt bad. And I didn't even, I felt bad as soon as I ate again and was on full blood sugar. <laughs> Why did I do that? But, um, checked out my stuff. I was 100 feet into private land, not public land. You can figure out, it takes some research, but you can figure out through the clerk of court who owns that land. Here in Texas, it's a big oil company. And you can write them a nice letter and returning most of your turtle shell, say, I'm very, very sorry. What do you want me to do else? But hey, could, could I bring my geologist friends with me and do some collecting here? That's what we'd like. Um, you know, can I keep the four pieces that I've kept? Um, 
but if you want them, I'll send them to you. You know, I made him a nice letter, and I put in some chocolates from Oscar. <laughs> I figured some secretary's gonna get this, and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna be the man. Um, I did get a response. It just said, no, we, sorry, we don't allow any collecting on any of their lands, and it's that whole patchwork stuff. Um, but they let me keep it, keep the few pieces I had, which was very nice. So next time, I'm not doing that again. And I would ask you to not do that. And, uh, but there's tons of stuff out there. Now, just random roadside encounters, have a few of those. There's some Chalcedony, found at North Rollins, just pulled over and looked. Didn't do research, just pulled over and looked. And that, I'm not sure if it's calcite or if it's dolomite, but it's an inclusion in that Chalcedony. So if you want to polish that up, you're going to break into some of those, and as soon as some acid gets in there, it's going to eat it out, and it's gone. So you can do anything with it. Well, you could, but it's not worth it. That nice green <coughs> stuff, uh, that's adventuring, and that's chrome uh, from Fuchsite. One of my favorites, uh, professor at... Uh, uh, Concordia Teachers College, way, way back in the day, took us here, Professor Plumman, and I found that barrel of crystal, got a piece of it out, and then 20 years later, 30 years later, something, 20 years later, went back, found the crystal again, and got some more out. Wow. I was very excited to find it again. <coughs> uh, if you ever go to Topaz Mountain, to get the Topaz and the Red Barrel, and I have some of the Red Barrel, Get the e-guidebook. It'll walk you through of what you want to look for and not look for and all that good stuff. So here's the lithium site I talked about. I think it might be under claim still. Uh, may not. Uh, I was planning on going there next week. It's like, I haven't called the county clerk yet. And I'm just not going to bother. I'm going to let that guy, whoever had the claim on there, have his time to either abandon it or not and make his decision. Because he probably paid his fee and just, it's not updated. But there's tourmaline, spodamine, and lipidolite there. And it's a fun place to dig. The spodamine will slice you up. I seriously, seriously opened a finger up there. Bleeding all over the place. And there's some apatite crystals in there too. Ugly blue ones, they're, they're pretty. Something happened to them. Oh, favorite kind of selfie, because maybe you can see it there, and that's kind of fun. So this is the Money Values Prospect. This is in Centennial and Snowy Range, uh, the southeast corner of the state. There's old mine shock. Again, I promised, here we go. You can see the hole right there. And you could get in there if you wanted and go in and do all of that stuff. And I, I want to go into old mines so bad. But I promised Chuck I won't do it. <laughs> no, it's, it's just, it's one of those things, oh, I want to do it, but it's a really stupid idea. <laughs> um, you know, so I just don't. But I found some cool stuff there. Like, again, when I went and, so I'm at the prospect. I'm, I'm there, I'm in all, all the, rocks and I'm having a good time, but my little app says I'm a thousand feet away of where I'm supposed to be. So maybe this is the wrong one and there's a better one over there. So I go over there through the swamp and there's this uh, fairy slipper orchid, a calypso orchid, and they're pretty rare actually. They're only at high altitude wet places around the world, but only those little high altitude wet places. And I would have never found that had I not gone chasing after the app. So anymore, you know, I love using that app, and then every time I'm like, okay, yeah, I found my spot already, but I'm, I'm gonna go and find out where it's supposed to be. You know, because there'll which, probably be something there. Which app are you referring to that's on? Oh, that one is called Geology Space WI. Okay. That, that's right, the one that's on it. That's the one that's on it. Uh, I like it because it lists those things, but everything it's listed, it's all published materials. And all of that stuff was originally pub published in Bulletin 50, but also in um, 
bulletin 71. So when you're looking at these sites in the Wyoming Geological Survey bulletin, you know, they say, okay, in this section township range quarter section, look for this. This will give you a dot to start at. Um, so they're still there. Um, and then wandering way back, I found this uh, pigmentite that it didn't look like anybody had done any work on. You know, they probably, I'm sure somebody looked at it at one time and chose the other one. But here's fresh stuff to start digging, which you can get through the lumber in the deck farm. What you find there is some uh, columbite and tantalite. Uh, and your cell phones need that for the, uh, for the niobium, for the, for the magnets, for the speakers. And that's a level, I love barrel. That's a lovely barrel crystal. Pretty. Wyoming sapphire. I can't tell you where this is from because we don't know. Uh, it's waste in the get, uh, gold pan. I don't know if some of you may or may not know Matt Stern, but when he was, he's a local guy, he's an archaeologist now, uh, grew up here, and he wanted to go, do gold prospecting, so he had three buckets of sand that he was going to go through and search for gold. He had gotten permission from somebody who owned a gold mine at uh, South Pass. So we got some of the, that dirt. The other bucket was from somewhere he thinks maybe in Teton County, you know, one of our creeks that they're supposed to have some gold, so he got some sand there. Years later, back from college, his mom says, hey, are you ever going to do anything with all that dirt in the garage, in the barn? <laughs> okay, so he does. Didn't find any gold, but he found some weird things. Are they sapphires or not? He didn't know. So I, as soon as I saw him, it's like, those are sapphires, but let's polish one up, get a refractive index check from Jan. Um, uh, case over a JC jeweler. Sure enough, 176, it's a sapphire. And it, it can look between this one, see our banding in there, mm -hmm. our little growth sounds. And I never did figure out what the um, inclusion is in the middle. But it just happened to be there. So up to Swift Creek, our Swift Creek, Teton County. That's me leaving there in the snow. I thought I found Jade up there. I really thought I found Jade. Um, it's not Jade, it's Serpentine, and it's really cool. And I get, there's some magnetite in it, which is really cool to see those tiny little crystals in there. Um, and, then, and that's just right, so as you're going up the creek, up Swift Creek and you're almost, you're finally out of the woods and now you're above the trees and you're on the trail and down, even on the trail up there you'll see these white bands of quartz with some little dark stuff. The dark stuff is green, that's the serpentine. But as you go up and it's this flat bench before you get to the pass, you know, it's pretty flat there for a while and you can see the final hump. Down over to the right, is where this spot is. And, uh, and it's listed in those books of molybdenite there and unknown gemstone. And so that's what I found. So thank you all so much. Thank you. Don't forget to close the gate. Yes, sir. Is there any places around here that you potentially can have a in the walk? Sure. You know, we do in the summertime try to have all across the month sort of thing. So. Yes. Um, Swift Street's not it. But, um, and, and those calcites from the hot springs, I don't think they're, they're a little too hard to get to. Um, there is supposedly, doing the research on the baculites, um, by Upper Slide Lake, there's, there's a paper, and I'll try to find it again, but it shows you, okay, that this part of the hill 
you can find the baculites. At this part of the hill, you find the Hutchimachites. And, you know, all the different fossil layers on this hillside. I don't know, I mean, it take a while to drive up there, but just, to watch, I think it, it's just... Yeah, just keep in mind, if you do come across something pretty cool, and that yeah. you know, could get to it in a couple of hours and back, uh, that's something we can put together a little, little okay. excursion on a... Yeah, that would be fun. In, yeah, it is in the zone. And there's probably, up on Teton Pass, off the pass, there's some obsidian places up there. But yeah. I've never, I don't know where they are, I haven't looked for them. Because again, the obsidian, dollars a pound, not, not, you know. And I know I'm never going to get rich that, but, you know, that, that's my love right there. That's mm -hmm. finding the gems, hopefully. Hmm. Any other questions? Well, I got all a, bu a bunch of rocks up here. And some of the red barrel, which I'm quite proud of, because that's super rare gem. I wouldn't call those quite gems, but uh, uh, two places in the world that you can find it. Yes. Mike, if you ever go to the gem state, I understand there's places up there that you can find topaz and... What, what I've wanted to. Here? There's a place by, um, in the sawtooths, and there's world-class aquamarine there. Uh, and topaz. It's not like stable topaz. Um, but it's closed to collecting now because a few people, particularly.